in the first part um, I'm doing the unboxing and I also show you uh, how you can connect uh, the filter and the camera and so on uh, to your telescope and in the second part I will talk about the yeah, why I selected uh, to buy this specific camera and uh, those uh, specific filters. So yeah, have fun! First I want to talk about uh, yeah, my DSLR camera and why I decided to buy this CWO AZ or AZ 385MC camera dedicated and that's a dedicated astrocam and yeah why I bought it. So in general as I said last time in this video um, I'm not really happy with this Canon EOS M50 camera DSLR camera which I'm filming with at the moment um, mainly because of one reason it has no internal intervalometer and you cannot connect an external one. That's a big problem, especially when you're doing astrophotography, you're doing several, maybe hundreds of pictures of one object. And as I said last time, I'm at the moment I'm using my um, mobile phone with a Canon app. And then I press release, 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 right? And so make a picture, next, next, next one. And this can be really frustrating. So in general, I'm not happy with this camera because of this uh, missing uh, functionality. Um, so if you're having a camera with an yeah, intervalometer and you're really happy with the image quality and so on, that's great. And then you also have many op or you have several opportunities, right? You can do, you can send it, for example, to uh, for astro modification. And you also can buy um, filters, for example, a screw filter or a clip-in filter for your camera. Uh, for example, light pollution filters, right? In all non-Astro dedicated DSLR cameras, you have a filter built in, which um, yeah, actually deletes or removes um, important red um, parts of the spectrum of the visible spectrum so you're kind of blind for specific mostly red um, wavelengths so for some colors especially for red color uh, your non-modified dslr camera is blind too and that's the reason why many people send uh, send your their cameras for astro modification or even do this as modification themselves. So this is also possible. If you have a dedicated astro cam, for example, you can connect it to your computer uh, via USB 3 connection in this case. And then you have a dedicated astro software and then you can do the presettings, right? So how many uh, pictures you want to capture? Do you want to make movies? Do you make, want to make single pictures or images? Uh, how long do you want to have your exposure time? How, how many pictures you want to do and so on? Or how, how many frames you want to do and so on? So this is very nice. And in general, these um, Astro dedicated cameras, like those from CWO, um, are much more sensitive, also sensitive to this red uh, spectrum part. And in general, they have or they show or have lower noise, also uncooled uh, cameras like this one. But when you have a, yeah, let's say better or pricier uh, dedicated Astrocam, then you also have a built-in cooler and this also dramatically uh, reduce your noise. So that's why I bought a dedicated Asocam in general. But now let's talk about why I bought this one, the C or ZWO AZ 385MC camera. When we talk about selection of um, a certain Asocam, uh, you have to yeah, 
have to do some decisions, let's say. I think a good starting point uh, which can limit you <laughs> is the price, of course, right? So you have um, so you have very good also cooled cameras. Uh, for example, this one or this one. And they are quite expensive, right? So they cost at least at least 1000 euros or dollars. Um, they are also you can also pay 2000 or something. So very expensive. And I set my budget to yeah, let's say maximum 700 um, euros in this case. Okay. So here you're already very limited, right? And the other thing you have to decide is, and this is a really important thing, uh, beside the money you want to spend, uh, what's the target you want to uh, image with, right? In general, you have um, only two uh, selection criteria, right? First one is you want to do um, planetary imaging and imaging of the moon, for example. And the second thing is you want to do um, deep sky object astrophotography. In general, as I said last time, there's no real black and white in astrophotography, I would say at least in most cases. So you can also do a little bit of deep sky object astrophotography with a planetary camera and uh, the other way around, right? Um, the thing is, if you want to make uh, photos or videos of planets, then you cannot really expect to have the same very good results when you're doing uh, deep sky objects, right? So these cameras are really dedicated and not just dedicated astrocams, but also uh, dedicated to certain uh, stellar objects. For example, if you want to do deep sky imaging, um, you need a yeah, even higher or more sensitive uh, camera with lower noise. That's also why, for example, when you're doing deep sky astrophotography, you, uh, you exposure much longer. And that's why you also need cooling. That's very important. Because when you have an open shutter over several minutes, uh, your noise will increase dramatically and to reduce this noise you have a cooler and this makes the camera a lot more expensive on the other hand if you want to image planets uh, you also can do um, single images if you want but most people uh, like to do uh, movies and then you of course in one second you have several um, images uh, depends on your settings and yeah so you make a movie of this and here it's very important uh, to have a high frame rate so frames per second should be really yeah quite high when you're doing a planetary or moon imaging or something and you don't need high frame rates when you're doing a deep sky object as a photography and there are some important parameters and I would say we now go to the computer and yeah, I will show you what I mean. If you want to buy a dedicated AstroCam, um, there are um, many um, brands you can buy or cameras of different brands you can buy. And one of the, yeah, maybe the uh, most uh, well-known um, company is CWO, right? And I heard, um, yeah, only good things about those cameras. And so I decided to buy a CWO camera, right? All right. So when you have no clue about um, cameras and the different parameters and so on, it's always a good idea uh, to check the company uh, or the, yeah, the company's website. So what you can do here when you go to the CWO uh, website, you can go, you can scroll down and here is a um, feature option you can select. It's compare the ASI cameras, right? 
So here you have all cameras and then you have different selection criteria, you have different series and this is very um, nice here, you have categories. So I knew from my budget that um, for 700 bucks I cannot buy a actively cooled um, camera and I also don't want to buy a monochrome camera because then you also have to deal with different filters, you have long exposure times and so on. I would not recommend this for beginners to use monochrome cameras, but as you like. <laughs> okay, so now you can go to monochrome and cooled. No, I don't want to have this. You have uh, monochrome and cooled cameras. I also don't want to have this. You deselect and uh, cooled color and cooled cameras are very nice and they are very expensive. And this is what I want to have, right? A color non-cooled camera. And here you have different options. You have the 183, 178, 385 and so on, right? And from um, those cameras I selected three or pre-selected three. Um, 178 is very often used from many people and you have the 224 MC camera. A C is for color, right? And I also, and someone uh, from the Astro Shop uh, recommended to use the 385 MC camera. Okay, so then you can go here and you can select your camera of interest, right? You can select the 385, you can select the 78, 178, sorry, and you have the 224 MC. Okay, fine. And then if you don't want to check all the parameters or if you have no clue about this, um, yeah, it's no problem. And you have a rating here from the company, from the CWO company, right? So this camera, or let's begin with the 385. Um, this camera, for example, is excellent for planetary imaging, right? And you also have a second, second option, it's deep sky imaging. And from all cameras, uh, the 178 and the 385, from these uh, three cameras are the best for deep sky imaging. And the 224 is uh, not so well suited for, uh, two, two, uh, for deep sky imaging. Okay, very nice. So as you can see from the rating alone, uh, this camera is um, yeah, quite versatile, I would say. And this is what I want. Right? Uh, in the future, I want to do deep sky uh, imaging, but at the moment I'm doing planetary with my Maxitov. Yeah, I always try to think about the future also, about my equipment, and since it's no, not all very um, cheap, um, later I want to use this camera for guiding. Maybe I will also buy a cooled camera in the future and this camera maybe should also um, work for guiding. In principle, um, for guiding it's um, very nice um, to, yeah, to have monochrome cameras. Uh, there are also special uh, guiding CWO monochrome cameras, which are more sensitive, let's say. Okay, so here you have the sensor, but I will make it very short. I, I will not go into detail about each and every fact here. So when you do uh, or want to do a deep sky imaging, it's very nice to have a very high resolution. Um, planetary cameras in principle have lower resolution, right? So here 2.1 megapixel, 1.2, and this uh, has a resolution of 6 0.4 megapixels. It's also very nice um, to have uh, quite big 
uh, pixel sizes because with this one you can collect uh, more light which is also important as I said before uh, when you're doing planetary uh, imaging it's very important to have high frame rates because you're using this technique uh, like, uh, called lucky imaging so you have many many um, frames per second so yeah, images per second and um, you want the picture which show a quite low um, atmospheric um, disturbance and so on. Uh, so it's very nice to have many uh, pictures or, my, or high frame rate. Okay. So right, all right. And another fact which is very important for me, since I want to do a deep sky object uh, imaging and I have no cooler, it's also very uh, nice to have a quite low read noise. And from all these uh, three cameras, this has the lowest read noise. And yeah, and another fact is also important as uh, the full well capacity. And yeah, this actually describes uh, the value um, at which the, yeah, the pixel is saturated, right? So you can imagine you have a bucket, your bucket is your telescope and you have a rain and this is your light. And if you have a bigger bucket, it can collect more light and a small, smaller bucket would collect uh, less light until it's, uh, yeah, it, it, will, um, it will be saturated or full. And if you have a if a pixel on your sensor which is full or saturated you can also have some kind of spill over to other uh, pixels and this is actually something you don't want to have uh, okay so with 18,700 electrons this has a quite high uh, full well capacity at least higher than the 178 Another very nice thing is the bit depth. And this actually just describes you have the black tones or color, you have the white color, and in between you have different uh, yeah, shades of gray, let's say. And if you have a higher bit camera, you have more shades of gray. And if you have a lower, you have low, lower uh, shades of gray. So. If you have a higher bit depth, uh, for example, the 14 bit here, um, you also have a higher dynamic range, right? So you can see more, um, more shades of gray uh, or black and white um, compared to each other, right? Um, yeah. Okay, but 12 bit is quite good, I would say and um, yeah but there are so many uh, very good uh, youtube um, videos about this and and all the facts and so on related to this so for me i wanted to have a very versatile camera and i think with the 385 and also as far as i read so far it's a yeah very versatile camera right so it's excellent for planetary imaging but it's also suited good or very good uh, suited for deep sky imaging. In general, I am very interested in doing deep sky astrophotography and this will be also my main target uh, for the future. But at this time point, I really not want to spend over 1000 or 2000 uh, euros or dollars. So yeah. This is one reason why I did not buy a deep sky object camera with a cooler because they are really expensive. <laughs> and I think uh, with the 385, uh, I'm quite versatile, I would say. So actually it's uh, kind of made for planetary and lunar imaging, but it also has um, yeah, quite good parameters uh, in order to do um, deep sky object astrophotography. 
Um, this is more important for me, right? So at the moment I have a, this Maxitov telescope and it has a high um, focal length as I showed in this video. But it's also possible to do astrophotography of deep sky objects using this uh, instrument. Um, but in general it's really made for planetary and lunar imaging. But, spoiler, <laughs> um, yeah, around beginning of next year, maybe February, February let's see, um, I will also have another instrument made for deep sky objects. So, and then it's very handy to have a device, a dedicated astrocam, where you can do uh, both, right? So it has better quality when you're doing uh, planetary and lunar stuff, so with this one, but it's also very uh, suitable, it's not perfect, but it's really suitable and nice for deep sky objects, I would say. So that's why I bought the dedicated Astrocam in general and why I bought this one. Before I talk about this Optolon L Pro filter, I want to talk about uh, this uh, CWO filter drawer, this one. And yeah, it's very nice. So as I show you, you have two magnets here. You have this filter drawer. You put your two inch filter here, you screw it in. And yeah, it's really tight. It's really tight. So one side you have your camera, for example. Let's say you have your camera. And on the other side you have your telescope, right? Or your, your lens. And of course it's also possible to buy uh, screw-in filters. But I like this because uh, it's very easy to add and remove uh, your filter, right? And that's why I bought this uh, filter drawer. Because I, at least I also try, because to be honest, that's all quite expensive stuff and that's not a really um, cheap hobby, I would say. So that's why I also and all the time try to think about okay I have my astro gear now but what do I want to do or what will I have which astro gear will I have maybe in the future and maybe when I think about I will definitely buy a, de a dedicated deep sky object uh, CWO camera in the, in the, in the future but not now and uh, maybe I will also at some time point start doing uh, monochrome photos. So then you're using a monochrome uh, camera and you're using different uh, specific uh, filters to in the end to do the processing and to have a um, color image. And I'm also thinking about if you're doing this then you don't want to screw in and screw out your filter every time. And then it's very nice to have such a thing. Maybe you have several drawers with several uh, filters and you have this in your optical train. And then you go, okay, now I do this. I do several photos with this uh, filter, then I take it out, then this, and it can go on and go on. So that's why I like the filter drawer more than um, screw filters or something. So, okay. And now I want to talk about this uh, filter uh, just shortly. I, I will not do a complete uh, overview of different filters. I like this a lot. There are um, many YouTube videos about uh, different filters and so on, really specific filters, narrow band and broadband filters and so on. And I like this very much. If you already maybe decided or half decided which filter you want to use. So you have a comparison maybe between different filters and so on. Very good. Okay, let's talk about light. But please consider, I will make it really simple, right? Our human eyes are sensitive to a region 
of 400 to 800 nanometers, right? This is the visible spectrum. And 400 nanometers, as you can see here, is more like uh, blue, bluish colors, violet and so on. And on the other side, you have 800 nanometers, uh, which uh, relates to a color which is red. Okay. And to make it very simple, if you have a combination of wavelengths in this region between, let's say, 400 and 800 nanometers, you will have a light which looks white. Okay, so we have white color. Okay, so that's very fine. But why is it nice to use such a light pollution filter like this Optolong L Pro filter? Uh, first, I want to say that's a broadband filter. You also have narrowband filters. And to be precise, that's a broadband pass filter. And you also have, for example, narrowband pass filters. That means broadband, those filter, those broadband pass filter will only allow uh, light of a certain uh, wavelength to pass, right? And this region is quite broad. That's why it's called broadband filter or broadband pass filter. And on the other hand, you have narrowband filters, right? And as the name indicates, you have a quite narrow region uh, where the light can pass when you're using a pass filter and not a cut filter, right? Okay, very nice. So why should I use a broadband filter or why should I use a narrowband filter? Here I have to talk a little bit about light pollution and light pollution sources. As you all know, in our yeah, artificial world, let's say, we have many sources of light pollution. We have LED lamps, uh, we have uh, street lanterns, and we also have, for example, satellites, which reflect some light, and many more sources, unfortunately. And if you're using different filters, you can cut off especially those regions of light emission caused by those uh, sources of light pollution, for example. The problem, however, is in the past there were, for example, high pressure and low pressure um, sodium lamps. And they have a specific wavelength of emission, right, within the spectrum. The problem, however, is that people want to have not red, orange light, but they want to have white light. And this is also why more and more uh, light sources are produced uh, or made or created, invented, which show not only a small region, emitting region of this spectrum, but a broad region. Right? And that's a problem. So now, for example, you can use a broadband filter, uh, which let pass only a certain wavelength, but you will never have, using a filter, light pollution free images. Because more and more, the light sources we, 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 are, we are creating are broadband uh, light sources. So they are not just uh, limited to, to certain wavelengths, but they will cover the whole w uh, spectrum. So that's why it's not possible to use filter and not to have any light pollution. What you can do, however, you can not just use a broadband pass filter like this one, but you can use a narrowband filter. Where, as I explained earlier, you have a narrower region and that's why you also have a higher contrast because you only let pass a very small or quite small region of this uh, visible spectrum. And by using those narrowband filters, you will also decrease the amount of light pollution to a minimum.
However, when you're using a narrow band filter, you have the problem that you're losing color, color variation, I would say. So on one hand, if you're using a narrow band filter, you have a very low amount of light pollution. On the other hand, of course, you also have a lower variety of colors, right? And when you're using a broadband filter like this Optolung L Pro 2 filter, then on one hand you have a high color variation, that's very good. On the other hand, you have a quite high amount of light pollution within your images. So when you're using a broadband filter, you sacrifice low light pollution for high color variation. And when you're using a narrowband filter, you sacrifice color variation or variety by low light pollution. Okay, so you have to decide, do you want to have a very, very low amount of light pollution in your images? then you have to sacrifice color variation and then you can use a narrowband filter or narrowband pass filter if you want to have a higher color variety uh, then you will also have quite a high amount of light pollution within your images so you have to decide of course, you can also buy much more expensive filters for, let's say, 700 euros or something. Then maybe you can have a little bit of both, let's say. Um, yeah, but just in certain limits, right? Just in certain limits. Uh, at the end, you always have to decide. So if you want to have a high contrast and a very low amount of light pollution, then you should select a narrowband filter or narrowband pass filter. If you want to have a very high variety uh, in terms of colors, um, then I would prefer uh, or then I would select a broadband pass filter. And this is what I want. And with this, I will come back to my Canon ES M50 DSLR camera and my um, dedicated Astro camera. Uh, the problem with this camera, with this DSLR camera, is not just the missing intervalometer, but there's another, another problem because those DSLR cameras have a built-in, uh, let's call it red filter. That means uh, this camera is blind for some parts of red or the amount of red color is strongly reduced due to this built-in filter. And if you're using... So I'm blind for red, right? At least in parts, big parts. And if you're using such a dedicated Astrocam, this camera is also sensitive to those uh, red regions. So we, you will have a much, m much more intense... intense uh, uh, image if it comes to red and also other regions. So that's another reason why I use this. And with this, I will also come back to my filter. So as I said, I'm kind of blind for some regions, uh, red regions, when I'm using the, this DSLR camera. And I want to see colors, right? And that's why I selected this Optolong a Pro 2 filter because it's a broadband filter and using this broadband filter I will have more colors uh, compared to a narrowband filter and that's why I selected for a broadband light pollution filter. Yeah. With this I want to close and I am really looking forward to test my Optolong L Pro broadband pass filter and of course my dedicated Astrocam. On this instrument and yeah, I hope this was helpful for you. Maybe consider to subscribe to my channel not to miss this content. And yeah, see you next time, clear skies.